Welcome to the Take a Listing Today podcast, where our hosts, Jim Studebaker and Todd Robertson, give you strategies to get you out of the office right now so you can take a new listing today. And now, here's Jim and Todd. Hey, whoa, whoa. hey, we are back once again. The Take a Listing Today podcast. We are wonderful and glad to be here. I'm Jim. And I'm Todd, and we'd like to thank our four family members being on the webinar today. Yes, we appreciate that. <laughs> uh, we do have people standing by on the phones. Hopefully my mom got the message, and she's not going to forget. Also with us, as always, is our producer, Lisa Gray. Lisa Hi. Gray. Hello, everyone. Woo. We're so excited for everyone to be here. And we actually have many more than family. We have a huge turnout. So that's great news. A lot of people want to learn some things from you, Todd and Jim. So let's let's move along and help them on their way to All learn right. more about becoming a listing legend. And you look more official today. You're wearing headphones. Yes, I am. It's I got nice. an upgrade. <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, we're glad that you got upgraded and we are going to have a wonderful show because we are fortunate enough to have the author of this wonderful book, Become a Listing Legend legend and he is right here with us maybe you didn't know after all these months of our podcast broadcasts that todd was the author so wow we are now in the presence of royalty very fun i can't even go grocery shop anymore people stop me go to the bank um, right say hey you, maybe you, you wrote that book yeah 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 that's actually a couple years away from that happening. okay maybe, that's, yeah that's happening in your mind right i might now. have embellished that a little bit yeah <laughs> <Or a dream. laughs> yes dreams yes. What, whatever it is but we're going to go over some of the topics of Todd's book today, and it's all about how to become a listing legend and ways that you can become that legend in your own marketplace. So the first chapter of the book is talking about the power of thinking big. And Todd, you go into kind of like what motivational leaders have to say. People like Tony Robbins and Floyd Wickman and Mike Ferry, Dr. Charles McCall, share with us a little bit about their thoughts on what uh, you can do to think big. Sure, it's a great it's it's a great starting point today because if I look at what my mentors had to share with me and they said, you know what, if I could turn back the clock, I would think bigger thoughts. And we think about people, us or people in our lives that we know, a lot of people are like, well, I'll go do that when this happens or when that happens, right? It's like the old saying, one for the money, two for the show, three to get ready, four to get ready, five to get ready. Well, nobody ever goes. So the point is, from those mentors, and luckily I was able to latch on to some of that thought process early on, is think bigger thoughts. Have a goal so far out there that it will stretch you in terms of who do you have to become to make that goal happen. And you really need to take time to understand that concept. And a couple books, Todd, that you recommend are uh, The Power of Positive Thinking and The Magic of Thinking Big. What are people going to get out of those books? Well, what's amazing, it's, it's um, and I've summarized a little bit in here, but <clears throat> so some of these books were written back in the 30s, back in the 50s, so it's been a topic that's been with us forever, and we find that people still struggle with this every single day. So I wanted to give them some other resources to go to so they can take control of the one thing that gets in the way. Why? Everybody knows how to sell real estate, right? 20%, mm -hmm. every, everybody knows, right? There's no secrets, been around for 100 years. But it's the 20% it's the psychology that will allow us to go out there, stir it up, and do great things in this industry. Exactly. And, and model others. There are big thinkers where you are right now in your own real estate office. Model those people. Uh, focus on what those guys are focusing on. Do what they're doing. They're probably not sitting at home watching soap operas. They're <laughs> out doing something productive, right? Correct. Plus, part of it is a mental game. Exposure to great resources is a key. Take in all of the seminars that you can, the webinars, get involved with a coach, a mentor, watch brilliant podcasts like the Take a Listing Today podcast. That's one that I would recommend. Exactly. And <clears throat> when people start the business, right, and I know there's people listening right now, now that are at different levels. I get that. And think about this. After your administrative stuff, and there's a lot of noise that gets in the way, narrow it down to what do you want to have happen listing-wise and there are so many free resources. Your broker, go to YouTube. There are seminars, there's great books, and all those things will help you accelerate learning, right? School of Hard Knocks costs us a lot of time and money, and implementing strategies like this, boom, accelerated learning. Now we pass up the competition, we start to dominate the game, the rest of them dabble and have an average life. And the great Lou Holtz, football coach, Notre Dame, many, many years, many championships, said, you're either growing 
or you're dying. You can't stay where you are. So you mentioned in your book, you're either playing offense or defense. You can't just be in the middle. Defense is a very stressful game to play. You need to learn to play offense by organizing your days and having a plan. And to that point, uh, I was reading last night and I was doing some homework and they talked about, it's interesting, they talk about most people in life or in business or in survival mode. Okay, I have to do this to pay these bills, right? They talk about get out of survival mode and how does that happen? So we're playing offense or defense. So let's get away from defense, get out of survival mode and go into domination mode. But let's do it smart, lead with revenue along the journey. And one way to do it smart is to have some standards. That's what Tony Robbins said. Life is all about standards. You used to work for Tony Robbins. That was probably a great experience. Yeah, it, that was a great experience. And um, I make it a habit to go see my mentors each year. And I'm going down to see him in November in Miami uh, just to keep my game sharp, work on me, my life, and business, and watch him work the group, work the audience from stage. But to elaborate on that, <clears throat> he did talk about he said, if you draw a line in the sand, he said, who besides me has ever had, right? We're human beings, so we're mm-hmm. gonna have problems, challenges, some health stuff, some we're gonna lose people. Um, and he said, a lot of people are gonna get, they'll not be happy with their weight. Some will not be happy with their business. Some will not be happy with the way their relationships are going. And what he said is draw a line in the sand and make a decision here and here that you will never go back to that place again. And for some people, it's five good quality sellable listings in their inventory. Mm -hmm. That's their standard. For other people, it's to get rid of habits that don't support them anymore and tell everybody about it and say, boom, done. That's their standard. So have your standards. Stretch yourself. Here's one of the things he mentions. If if you're used to 30 listings a year, what is your new standard going to be? It's kind of like a stretch goal. If you're at 30, maybe next year you need to be at 50. If you put your mind to it, you can do it. Imagine if you elevate your standard in other areas of your life what type of compound effect would that have over time it might be really incredible if you just go out there and stretch yourself a little bit exactly and the compound effect has been around forever and business can be frustrating i know everybody wants everything right now right we're in this day and age instant gratification but think about this if we can swing for singles every day not beat ourselves up have a great game plan right so the realtors have their prospecting time, the time they're gonna go visit past client centers of influence, and then their listing appointment slots that are available. Mm -hmm. There's great magic in that. Absolutely. The next chapter, why do agents fail? Oh boy, they don't wanna hear this. Should we skip this one? (laughs) Maybe, but you know, it's in the book, so there must be a good reason. (laughs) So let's let's look at it from a strictly objective viewpoint. 80% of the business is done by 20% of the people. That's the famous rule that's out there. But NAR actually has a little bit different. They say that 7% of real estate professionals are doing 93% of the business. Now, which would you want to be in the 7% or the 93%? If you want to be in the 93%, good. Hang around the office, do a deal every now and then, watch days of our lives. Okay. But if you want to be part of the 7%, You need to pivot your thinking and include bigger thoughts, such as setting the standards for yourself, putting systems in place, things that make a positive impact on your success. And Ty, do you mention quite a few here in your book? Certainly, and see, there's no secret to it that that if a person gets into the business and they have two, two options, most people are gonna say, boom, I'm gonna do it my way, or they have a buddy that teaches them. But if you look at what the very, very successful people do, and that's why seminars are great, books are great, podcasts are great, YouTube is great, find out what they've done, right? There was an old joke we used to say, you know, go into your office, find out what the poor people are reading, don't read it, (laughs) right? Right? (laughs) Don't do what they're doing. Right, Mm -hmm. but if you look at what the top people are doing, which is what this whole podcast is about, how do we help you start steering yourself if you're not there yet, how do we help you start steering yourself to become in that top 7%. And that will do a lot of things for you in terms of your life, your family, your confidence, your self-esteem, your bank account. So a lot of magic's gonna happen. And it's interesting, you mentioned the number one area of agent failure is the listing presentation, which I can't believe anybody who listens to our podcast would have that problem since we had a topic about how to give killer presentations recently. But in case your presentation is not quite up to par, three things to look at, practice, Practice your presentation, pace, work on your pauses, your tonality, and increase confidence. Once your presentation is perfected, you'll get excited to go out 
and start prospecting, which is what you need to do to be successful in this business. A second reason agents fail, look at your environment and your mindset. Look at the office environment. What are 95% of your agents in your office doing? How often are they prospecting? You probably want to stay away from toxic people that might be with you in your office. A personal commitment. Make an agreement that you're no longer going to play small with yourself, with your clients. The bigger you play, the more people you help buy and sell real estate will result in a better outcome for you. And it's interesting. Why do agents fail? Jim's exactly right. It does come down to the presentation, but it's kind of a trick question, right? So... So in front of, um, I spoke, I think, in 38 states, then over 2,000 seminars, and I would always ask people the question. I would say, question, number one reason most people fail in real estate. I'm going to give you three options. What would they be? Prospecting, mm -hmm. the presentation, mm -hmm. or the close. So we'd have some fun together. Okay, who says prospecting? Okay, why? Who says, pre nobody says presentation. Who says close? Oh, because that's where you get the money. So it's a very, it's, it's a great topic to have because it's very indirect and somebody could make this happen very quickly. So the real number one reason agents fail is prospecting. They're scared. They don't want to. If we peel off more layers, which we've done in here, we come to find out that their confidence level, what to say, right? At the kitchen table, objection handling, um, competition wise, so that's where your, your strength and your power will come from in terms of prospecting. That will allow you to go do something and get excited about what other people hate, which is prospecting. Now you're excited to go do something people have a fear about. Now you've tipped the scales in your favor. That's wonderful, wonderful uh, a thought. This third reason I, I really like is, is running your business like a business. So you get into real estate and you become somebody with the independent contractor mentality, meaning that, great, I can show up whenever I want, I can do what I want, I don't have anybody yelling at me, okay, but let's look at what a real business does. Does a real business have hours that they work? Does a real business have a business plan? Do they have a budget? Do they have marketing? Do they have goals? Yes, so just because you're an independent contractor doesn't mean that you can just do what you want and be lazy. It means that you actually need some accountability and you need to have a schedule. Block out time for your activities, prospecting, phone calls, appointments, and make sure you follow up. If you were at a nine to five job and you weren't following a schedule, would your boss yell at you? <laughs> right. Right? You're, you are your own boss now, and you have yourself that you need to. Exactly. Work for. And another point to that is your clients will respect this, by the way. Here's why if your clients say, so most realtors are going to jump, they get a phone call, boom, they're going to jump. I'm going to drive 90 minutes that way for a potential listing appointment. Or, oh, I've got a potential buyer, I'm going to drive 45 minutes that way. If a realtor has a schedule, like any great small business owner would, whether you own a subway shop, a great restaurant, an oil change, hey, I have a schedule, I'm prospecting here and here, I've got two openings, I have one at three and one at seven, they're going to respect you for having a schedule. Wow because they don't hear that, they don't get that. They're used to people just jumping. Mm -hmm. um, they're gonna go, wow, I'm dealing with a professional here. Exactly, you've got other things to do, you're busy helping other customers. Exactly. People wanna deal with other busy people because they know that you're actually doing some business. And those people make things happen, correct. So the next chapter in your book, Todd, is about closing the gap and looking for ways that you can close the gap from where you are right now to where you ultimately want to be. And you mentioned a few different things that are really great. One is accelerated learning, finding somebody who has achieved the results that you're after and learning from that person. It might be your broker or the manager or the owner of the real estate office. Systems in place, especially prospecting systems that allow you to make contacts every single day. Maybe it doesn't have to be you, but at least you're getting your name and face and occupation in front of people as often as you can. Passive marketing campaigns. It's kind of like duplicating yourself on a copy machine. They allow you to be present in more than one place mm -hmm. at a time. And get with some mastermind groups. Meet with a group of like-minded people. So that way you can hold each other accountable to whatever metrics you come up with as a standard for your new success. Anything you'd like to elaborate on that? Yeah, let me elaborate on those last two uh, for a couple different reasons. Because... Let's start with the mastermind group. That will cost a realtor nothing. So those of you listening or watching right now, 
in your city, there are other people, possibly in your industry. Well, we know they're in your industry. Or you can go outside of your industry because that would be good for networking. Mm -hmm. But start a mastermind group. In the book, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, there is one chapter. You can go to any bookstore. It's in there, right? It's been around since the 1930s. One whole chapter is on the mastermind principle. I've been in numerous mastermind groups. It's phenomenal, not only in terms of socially, and you get to meet some high-powered business people that help elevate your thinking. You'd be sitting around mm -hmm. there going, wow, okay, I, was think I thought I was thinking big. So start a mastermind group. You might meet once every two weeks. It might be at somebody else's house, a different location. Um, and I also like what you said, add passive marketing campaigns. Here's why. We know this happens. I talked to a realtor this morning. <coughs> Excuse me. Oh, um, all my listings sold and um, I need to start some marketing right now. Well, if all of your listings sold, that means you're out of business, right? So if I'm the realtor and that's happened, I'm out of business until you I have You want it. them to sell, but you don't want them all sold so you have nothing left. Correct. You need to keep putting new stuff in the pipeline. Yeah, so if yes. we can be ahead of this, right? Mm -hmm. Obviously, right, the hunter and the farmer, which we'll get into here, here, here in a few minutes, but we want you to go out and prospect, right? Be assertive, be strong. That will help you get here. But along the journey, have a passive campaign in place. So a couple different things are happening. So if one dries up a little bit, the other one's not going to, and the average agent will not be playing at this level. Got it. And the next step, kind of helping to build all of this up, is to build the foundation, which is the next chapter in your book. This is a great quote. Education without application is worthless. <laughs> Doesn't matter what you learn if you don't do something with it. You need to have a little discipline. Uh, take action. Stick with it. Then you create momentum, which is where the power really lies. And I was going to say, action supersedes everything. Mm -hmm. And um, action supersedes everything, meaning this. Meaning we're never going to get to the point where we know everything and now we're ready to go out into the market because we're always going to be a student of life, a student of the game. So get strong at that presentation, but know that action supersedes everything. We're going to learn more stuff. We're going to come back and fine tune our game in the general's tent. We're going to fine tune it in our journal. Jim, well, and, oh, I'm sorry, Todd. Yes, go ahead. No, we have a question. Jim and Todd, we have a question. Sure. This is from Nick Ramsey. I'm going to go ahead and unmute him so he can ask his question. He's oh, good. He's going to go live with us. Very nice. Uh, just get that going. Okay. Nick, can you hear Oh, hi, guys. Nick, how are you? I'm doing good. Well, good. Welcome to our show today. Glad you are calling. You have a question for us. Yes, I was just asking if you guys think billboards are still effective marketing in 2019. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. I would say two things. I'll start and then you could elaborate. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so billboards are always interesting. And thank you for calling in. And we're always going to hit you with the truth as we see it and know it. I think that's a budget thing. You know, there's three ways a realtor can get business. They can wait for the business, which 90% of your competition will do. I'm gonna wait for a sign call and ad call. They could put systems in place and go get it, which is what we're chatting about today, or they can go buy the business. So I don't think billboards are terrible. I think if it fits into your budget, it's great, but don't just depend on that. If that's another source of business for you, another campaign in place, and you budgeted for it, I like it, but don't put all your eggs and just say, boom, I'm going in kamikaze on that. So I like it if those other variables are in place. I like that I like that as well. My thoughts on billboards, if you can keep it simple, it could be effective. When I go down the road and see billboards with five different phone numbers and teeny tiny websites, it's not doing me any good. I'm not writing that stuff down because I'm trying to drive. If you've got something catchy that maybe associates your face with your company, that could be effective, but don't put too much stuff on there. They aren't going to read it or remember it. Well, and Nick, I will say, so I go to California once or twice per year. That's where I used to sell real estate. And every time I'm in that town, you know, I drive around the town. And if a realtor does have a billboard, it does stand out. It makes me, I look up there and go, wow, these people are playing at a pretty high level. So, so I like it as long as a person's not going into debt to do it or they're doing it because... They have no other ways to get business, but so it's strong. It's strong. Just make sure it's budgeted for and you lead with revenue and you have these other systems in place. Right. Okay. Thanks, guys. 
Nick, Nick, would you uh, would you be uh, interested in in winning something here? Oh, absolutely, always. I, I would hope so. <laughs> well, Nick, we're gonna have we're gonna have a little fun here. We actually have a question for you. I have the question oh, here. It's if, like a game show, Nick. Just play along. You're gonna love it. <laughs> absolutely, right. you love it. It's a game show, and depending on how much we like your answer, you might win. Anyway, are you ready? Sure. All right. Here's your question. Rain contains what vitamin? Rain contains what vitamin? What would be in rain? Um, D. Vitamin D. Vitamin D. Do you want to stay with that? Oh. oh. No. Nick, that's going to cost you 25 bucks if you right, can send it to... Uh, um, <laughs> instead of us giving you the 25, you send it to us. I like that idea. Yeah. How about... T- tell you what, we'll, get, we'll give you a second chance. Oh, no. Second chance. <laughs> In the year 2020, what country will host the Winter Olympics? Oh. Nick, we need you to get this right. This could cost you 50 bucks. We're trying to help you. <laughs> do, do, you do you have a... Yeah, fr- do you have a friend who can Google, Google this for you real quick? All right, here's my lifeline. I'll ask my wife. Okay, let's do that. I'll give you a hint. Nick is currently using a lifeline. It's probably a good idea. <laughs> it's a very good idea. Luckily, he had the wife on standby. Beijing? Beijing? Judges? Beijing. Hey, that's the winner. Oh, All right. Nice. Congratulations, Nick. You have won. What did he win? Why don't we give them both to him? A $25 like gift certificate for prospectsplus.com and Todd's book, Become a Listing Legend. Do you already have Thank a copy? You, yeah. Do you already have a copy or would you like one sent to you? I do not have a copy of it. I would love a copy. Outstanding. We'll make that happen for you. Optionally, we can have Todd autograph it or if you'd like us to keep that off, you might be able to resell it. <laughs> your, your choice. No, I'm fine with the autograph. Okay, right, we'll good. Well, yep. uh, thank you for calling in, Nick, and Lisa will get all of your information uh, from oh, you so we can get your stuff out. And by the way, if you are going to do the billboard, it would be fun for you to take a photo and email it to one of us so we could see what you're doing, because uh, that's that's thinking big. So thanks for calling in, and thanks that for your question cool. once again. Nick, go ahead and send okay, thank you guys. Thank you. Format your email address, and we'll get all that out to you. Um, and uh, we actually have another person, another question. Oh, so another. So I'm going to go ahead and unmute. This is, it looks like Andrea Delia. I can't see the last name, but she's on the line. Okay. Vail. Hi. Hi. Oh, hello. hello. Andrea? I was just wondering, hi. Hi. I was just wondering if um, the mastermind group you suggested um, comprised of all realtors or realtors and other business partners like lenders, et cetera? Yeah, so there's a couple different ways you could go about it. I've been in mastermind groups that have been comprised of both. So when I was a realtor, um, I was in a real estate one. And then when I was a realtor, I was also in one with other colleagues. It could have been bankers, attorneys. And we met once every two weeks. Um, it was at a restaurant like 7 a.m., so, so it's kind of up to you. Like if you're going to start it, um, you, you know, if it's other industries, then it could turn into some referral stuff, which is good, but don't go into it for that reason. Um, sure. and real estate, you've got to make sure you have people as committed as you are. Of, of course. Gotcha. Was that a buzz? Thank so you. you got the right answer. W- would you be interested in winning something maybe from us today? Of course. Oh, how <laughs> about that? Well, I happen to have another 35 questions here that we can ask you, so. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll yep. grab the one right off the top. Oh, this is an easy one for you. Are you ready? I am. Okay. If you were to take a trip to the moon, <laughs> about how many miles would you need to go? <laughs> that, no she, idea. She's typing this in her computer right now. <laughs> Google, how many miles is it to the moon? I don't, hmm. I don't think she's ever planned on taking a trip to the moon, so she might not have researched this well, before. that could be. <laughs> I up. have no idea. Uh, All right, judges, no. Oh, oh wait, 238,900 miles. Well, you're right, but we already played the loser horns before we did that, so we're not going to be able to count that. That means but, your internet speed is too slow where you are for Google. Um, but we... we 
We will give you one more chance. <laughs> for, okay. For whatever reason, this also has to do with outer space, but hopefully that won't be a problem. Are you ready? What? Yep, I'm ready. All right. What galaxy is the Earth located in? What galaxy? Think back to... The Milky Way. The Milky Way. Yay! Oh, good job. All right. The Milky Way was the correct answer. What do we have for Andrea? We have a gift card. Would you also like an autographed copy of the Become a Listing Legend book? I would love it. That yes, would be please. Wonderful. Handled. All right. We will get that right out to you. Please send Lisa your uh, details over the uh, chat, and we will make sure to get that right out to you. Thank you so much for calling. Thank you. That does it for part one of our special two-part podcast series on the book, Become a Listing Legend, written by Todd Robertson. Be sure to check out part number two next week. We'll see you then.